Hello everybody and welcome to part 17 of our Intermediate Python series as well as another part in the Object Oriented Programming mini series. So in this tutorial we're going to be talking about inheritance. And inheritance is a major player in modularity but it also can help a lot with actually scaling and maintainability over time mostly because the notion of inheritance helps us to not add too much clutter to our code. Uh, as And that also, just not having that clutter also will help us scale over time and all that. And then also just in terms of modularity, it allows other people to take what we've got so far and then kind of mold it a little bit more to what they need. So with object-oriented programming, just because you're being taught object-oriented programming here, I don't expect everyone to go out and all the code that they write now is going to be object-oriented, right? That doesn't really make much sense. But when you are doing something like making something maybe for a client or maybe you are you have like some sort of open source software that people are using, I mean, all the, pretty much all the libraries that you're going to be using, they're object oriented because it just makes sense for them to be object oriented when they're going to be used by other people. So one thing and kind of frame of mind to always be in when you're writing classes is this kind of like, let's do the... the the minimum viable product, which I mean, is obviously kind of like uh, business lingo for truly the the most simplest form of the product that we can come up with. But it's a good thing to always have. Plus, it's actually fairly realistic because again, you're usually going to be writing object-oriented programming when you're actually trying to deliver something to a client, to somebody, a customer who is requesting something, right? So it's always a good idea to just try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, and that's where inheritance can come into play too. And so maybe in this case, you're, we're actually more playing the user where we're gonna actually use a class and inherit that class, but then also make some changes to it. So with that, let's go ahead and hop into it. So at this point, we're importing blob and then we're just straight using blob and it's giving us our, our blobs as we might expect. So now, what we're going to do is actually we're going to create a new uh, blob class and we're just going to say class blue blob and it's going to inherit from blob. Okay, so to inherit we just pass the some other class in there. So this is your parent class. It's your super class. Okay, these are names. You're going to hear people interchange these names. You might even also hear it called a base class. So all these three names you're going to hear and it's just other people from other languages bringing their terminology to Python. Really, they're basically all the same, but I would not suggest that you go to another language and you call them all the same thing. Anyway, um, yeah, so parent, base class, and super. Okay, all the same. So we're inheriting from blob, and we can actually just pass here, but what we can do is take blue blob now, copy that, and then we're just going to come down and replace and replace, right? So now we're going to run this. Okay, we get the same thing as we got before, but it's just showing you, at least at, in its most simplest form, we're just, we're creating a new class and we're inheriting from this base class uh, blob and we we're getting everything. So when you inherit from another class, you're inheriting everything. All of the methods and all that is coming to this new class. Now, probably uh, one of the first things that people are gonna wanna do is maybe change some things, but probably the first thing that's gonna come up is to modify the, the init method. So for example, you might have a scenario where with blue blob blob, you're just you're gonna say, okay, well when this is called, you know, maybe we want to make the color blue. This is a blue blob class, therefore maybe what we're gonna think of doing is like define uh, and then we'll do the dunder init, pass self, and then self.color is not double equals blue. Or something like that. You might think, okay, yeah, let's do that. Well when we run that we get a big old honking error. Um, basically that it's it's supposed to take one argument, but we got four. Well, that's because down here, when we call blue blob, we're passing self, and then also we're passing blue width and height. So what's going on there? So how could we have an init method for both classes? Well, that's where super comes into play. And so instead what we can do is we can say something like this. We can say, um, super and then dot underscore underscore init so we're just basically we're running the init method for the, for the super class whatever that super class might be and we're going to say color x boundary and y boundary 
And then of course, because we're doing that, this is all, now this is all contained within our init method. We're using these parameters here, so we need to pass them as well. And that space there. And for now, I'm just gonna do, uh, well, we can leave blue there. That should be fine. So now everything's gonna be blue though. So where we say red blobs, it, it, it's going to actually change them to blue. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. And now sure enough, all we have are blue blobs. But that's how we can um, reference that base class, that parent class. And this class is your child class or your subclass. Again, you're gonna hear both terms. It's the same thing, child class, subclass. It's the same thing in Python, um, at least in this setting. So the only other thing that people might be uncomfortable with is the use of super here. Um, it's, you could get away with doing something uh, like we could say here, we could say blob dot in it. And then we have to, we have to pass the instance. So we would say self, because like in the, we use suit, when you're using super, you don't have to pass self, but in this case you do, right? We're actually missing one positional argument uh, because this was being passed as self. But if we pass self here, uh, this will work. And sure enough, it, it works, but now it's, it's, it's a form of hard coding. And in this case, it's not a big deal, but at some point, you're gonna come across a time when you want to engage in what's called multiple inheritance, and this is going to cause a whole lot of problems. So instead we use super in it, uh, and we don't have the self there. Uh, there is a fantastic talk by Raymond Hedinger. Um, pull this over. Uh, check it out. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description, but there's already a link in the text-based version of this tutorial. So definitely check out the talk. It's kind of long if you're not familiar with Raymond. Uh, he is a great speaker, though, so um, definitely worth checking out. Uh, so anyway, if you want to learn more about Super and get a little more comfortable with how it works, especially if you're coming from another language where maybe you've got your idea of how Super works, um, that's not necessarily going to be the case here. So anyway, that's all we're going to do with Super for now. Maybe later we'll get into the more interesting details of Super, but that's all we're going to do for now. Now, when it comes to inheritance, the other thing that we can do is actually add new methods, right? So in this case, we've got just this one, you know, init method. We're just trying, we're just changing the, the color of the blob. And we basically are rewriting the init method. So in, so a good thing to keep in mind is, first of all, we can inherit. And when we inherit, we're taking all of the methods from the parent class. We can um, overwrite those methods as we've done here. We overwrote the init method. So because there's two methods, when we inherited from the blob class, when we did this, we're basically overwriting that init method. That's why it didn't work when we had two init methods and we weren't calling super or we weren't calling blob.init. We didn't have the, the required code basically to, to run what we needed. So we could, uh, we could also rewrite move, like we have a move uh, method. But instead, what we're going to do is actually we're going to create a new method and we're going to say um, move fast. And this method only needs to take self. And then what we're going to say is self.x equals something and self.y equals something. And let me see if we got random. We do have random. So move fast will just be uh, random.rand range negative uh, seven to uh, positive seven. Copy paste. And now we can use this new move fast method uh, somewhere. Here we go, blob.move. Now it's blob.move fast. So now we're gonna have some fast moving blobs. Oh, they've all gone to the corner. Did we not do a negative, negative seven to seven? Why did they all go to, what am I missing? Oh, equals, ah, plus equals. There we go. Let's try again. There we go. So some really fast, very definitely jaggedy, not very smooth moving blobs, but they are fast. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's how you can add new methods um, to, basically you're just, you're kind of just adding on top or molding the blob class. We could overwrite things, we can change things, um, and we can even uh, run specific methods if, if we need to, for whatever reason. In most cases, that's gonna be something like your init method. Uh, 
but there, you can do a lot of pretty cool things with supers. So again, check out that talk by Raymond. I probably won't talk too much about that. He is going to explain it way better than I can. He does live examples. It's basically the same thing. So um, anyway, he's a lot smarter though. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything else, uh, leave it below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.